Hi everyone. So I set myself a challenge to create myself a user-defined action so that I can pass in a list name, a content type name, and some of the fields that I want to see, and then output uh, all that information into a CSV format. So all the items in a list based on a particular content type to appear in, in CSV. So what I actually did is uh, I had some logical bits of workflow logic that would make up this user-defined action. So I split them up into states in a state machine. So once each state is finished, it jumps to the next one, that finishes, jumps to the next one, etc. So the very first state that we have is the get content type. Uh, what we're actually doing is based on the information provided by the user from uh, you know, passing parameters to the user-defined action, we're going to talk to SharePoint and find out some information uh, about that content type. So we'll expand this uh, and we'll say we're making a web service call to find out all the content types in the current list because you could have multiple. I'm removing the default namespace because I find that that makes it a little bit easier for me uh, to run some XPath uh, expressions, XPath queries over that XML and I'm pulling out information about the specific content type that has been provided to me. If I look up here in the UDA settings and go to parameters, you'll see I actually have four parameters. Three are input, the content type, the field names, which are uh, comma separated field names. That's what I want to see in my CSV and the uh, the list name that we're going to be querying. And then we're going to output the, the CSV finally to uh, a text variable or a parameter. And that's basically that state. And once that's done, we jump to the next one. The next one is getting all the internal field names. So what we're getting is we're getting the display names from the user who's, de who's designing a workflow that's going to call this user define action. And they're not going to know what the internal field names are. So this is a way of actually pulling that information out uh, from the SharePoint content type itself. So let's have a look how this is, uh, is doing it. Well, we already have the content type, uh, some of the content type information as in like the content type name and the actual internal content type ID. Now what we're doing is we're actually going to call SharePoint and get uh, more information about that specific content type. So if the content type you're dealing with is an item content type, then this is going to pull out all the fields uh, that are uh, in that particular content type. Again, removing the default XML namespace. We're going to split uh, the field names, the display field names that have been passed into us by the workflow into a collection variable. And then we're going to iterate through each of those um, display names. And we're going to pull out the internal field names from the content type XML. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have, for example, you might have a field name called uh, country. Now that might be the display name, but it could have been renamed a few times. And the internal field name might actually be nation. So this is a way of actually pulling out the appropriate internal field name. And then because um, part of the, uh, the query that we're going to do later on, we're actually prepending an OWS underscore in front of the, uh, the internal field names, and that's going to be needed later on. And then we're going to store all this information into another collection variable that we have. So fairly straightforward stuff, not, nothing too, too complex yet. Now what we're doing is we're doing something called the building the XSL chunk. Uh, and I'll go into a little bit more about that uh, later so we know why we're doing this. So you see we're iterating through each of the internal names. We're building uh, some XSL and you'll see is uh, some XSL there. We're actually doing a value of select and we're storing that internal field name variable that we have. And you'll see why we're doing that shortly. And then finally, we jump to the next state. Now, this is the final state, and this is where all the all the work is actually being done. We're actually making a call to the SharePoint list.asmx web service. We're calling a web method called getListItems. And then if you look at the SOAP packet that we're passing in, we're passing in the list name that has been provided to us by the workflow. We're also doing a query. And the query over here is we're actually querying for all list items in our list of a particular content type, which is the content type that was passed to us. So your list might have uh, a thousand items in it, and maybe 
a few of them are of content type one and the rest are content type two. If you only want your CSV to have uh, you know, content type two, this is a way of actually filtering down to those particular items. Now, once that's done, scroll down the bottom, we're actually storing that in a variable called text XML. So this will give us the XML version of all the items in our list. Finally, doing a bit of manipulation of the XML, it's come back again, just to make my uh, my XPath or my query XML a little bit easier for me. And then finally, we have a query XML action that takes our XML that we received back from the web service and we're running some XSL over it. And you'll see if I go down here, there's my XSL chunk variable that I built up earlier. So this is actually what the uh, the final result will actually look like. So this will take the XML in here. XSL is actually XML or um, style sheet transformation. Oh, I believe that's what it is. Um, so this will actually take the XML and transform it into something else. And this chunk is what tells it what the structure will be. So this is actually the comma separated internal field names, um, pulling them out from the XML and then storing them in comma separated format. And then we're finally outputting the result in CSV or the output CSV parameter. Now what we'll do is we'll go to our workflow that actually calls this, uh, uh, this user defined action. You'll see I've got my user defined action here. If I double click on it, you'll see I've typed in a couple of things like item is my content type. The fields I wanna pull out are country and age. And you can see they're comma separated there and then the list name, and then I've got my text CSV uh, variable, which is going to where I'm going to store my CSV output. And the log action is actually logging uh, the output variable. Now, if I go to my, uh, to my list, and I right click and go to workflows, and I'm going to kick off an instance of that workflow, at the workflow history, there you'll see I've got my five items, Australia, United States, UK, Malaysia, Canada, and some numbers there, they're comma separated. If I jump back to my list, you'll see I actually have Australia, United States, you know, all the items except for this one. And that's because this is a different content type. So if I was to actually make this visible, or the content type visible, you'll see all these are item content types and that one is a holiday, which is why that didn't appear in the CSV. If I then add a new item, we'll call this test six, and we'll, let's go Mexico. And then I rerun this workflow. check out the workflow history, you'll see now there's an extra entry into the CSV that was created. Now, if I wanted to do something else, like I actually want, at the moment we're only displaying the country and the age, but let's say I wanted to display the title as well. I could actually go back to my workflow and let's say I want to put title there and put a comma there, publish it. That shouldn't take too long. Once that's done, we'll run a new instance of the of the workflow, and we'll see we'll see what happens. Let's start this workflow. Should run fairly quickly. You know, of course, depending on the number of items you have in your list. Now let's look at the history, and it, now you'll see it's now in still comma separated format, but now you have the title as well. Now, finally, what I want to do is I want to do, I want to actually store this into a document library. So I'm actually going to put in a web request action. In here, in the URL, I will put in my web URL. And I'm going to put it in shared documents. And let's say I wanted to call it uh, final output.csv. I want to change this to do a put because we're actually going to be creating 
an item in that um, document library and I'm going to insert my text CSV, which contains all my CSV data. Now, because we're going to be making a web service call, we need to make sure that we use some credentials in order to create the item successfully. So everything is done there. I can now publish this, this workflow. And again, I'm just creating it in a SharePoint document library, but you can definitely send it off as an email, pass it back to some web service, store it in a database, you know, whatever it is you need to do. And then we'll run an instance of this workflow. And once that's done, we should actually have a file in here called file output. So let's refresh this. There's our file output. If you put your mouse over it, Oh, let's just do the properties here. You'll see that the, the file has been created. So just as simple as that, I will make this uh, user-defined action available on my blog uh, for you guys to be able to download and reuse. One thing to remember is that because we're using web service calls, I have a workflow constant that I'm using called site admin credentials. So in order for you guys to be able to use this, you need to either make sure you have another constant called site admin credentials with your own uh, credentials in there or create uh, update all the core web service actions and use the appropriate credential constant that is uh, valid in your environment. The other thing to remember is that if your, uh, if your list that you want to query is on another site, make sure you go to all your web core web service actions and you update the URL. So rather than being the web URL, uh, common property, which is going to be the current site, if you need to point to something else, you know, or maybe even a subsite, make sure you put the appropriate URL in there and then it should all work fine. Um, I hope this is useful for you guys. Uh, feel free to leave comments or any suggestions on how this can be improved. I'm sure there are better ways of, uh, of probably doing this. Uh, you know, you noticed how I was manipulating the, the XML and removing namespaces and all that sort of stuff. I'm sure that that's probably not necessary. But I just found that to be the quickest way to do it today um, to show you guys how it's done. So I uh, hope this is useful and uh, yeah, keep on reading the rest of my blog. Thanks very much.